President Obama has a new problem in the war in Afghanistan tonight, public opinion. A new CNN opinion research poll shows 57% against the war. That is up 11% from April. And the new numbers come with a new all-time high in casualties. At least 47 U.S. troops died in Afghanistan in August making it the deadliest month since the battle began eight years ago. Making matters worse, the U.S. commander on the front line said it is time for a revised strategy, a different approach to the fighting, and a majority of Americans calling for our troops to come home. Plenty of challenges for the president. Let's talk about them. Joining us now for a strategy session, senior political analyst David Gergen in, Af in Afghanistan, Michael Ware. Michael, uh, General Stanley McChrystal, the top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, submitted a report this week assessing the situation in Afghanistan. It's not public, but sources say he is calling for a change in strategy, do you think it would, do you think it's going to be more troop increases? Would, would that actually help? Well, I certainly know that more troops are needed. I mean, it's very difficult for these American generals to try and fight this war with the hand tied behind their back politically. And now we all know how sensitive troop numbers are here in Afghanistan. I mean. No one wants 68,000 troops to be here by the end of the year, let alone 80,000 or more, whatever it might take. So no one is rushing to bring troops here, but the way America is set up to fight this battle as it stands in Afghanistan, it can't win. So some kind of change is needed, Anderson. David Gergen, how concerned are you about the situation on the ground there? Well, I'm not as concerned as, uh, as those are to the people of the president's left and uh, the Democratic Party. You know, that poll showing 57% uh, of all Americans are opposed to this. Anderson, among Democrats, that number is 73% in the CNN poll. So you've got a lot of Democrats to President Obama's left who would like to pull out. There are even some conservatives like George Will who call for uh, pulling out, pulling a plug on Afghanistan. But the president has said this is a war of necessity necessity and he said during the campaign we had to win it for him to pull the plug at this stage just as Michael says we are move we are already starting to change strategy under General Petraeus and General McChrystal we're moving toward a counterinsurgency strategy it's we knew we were going to get a lot more casualties uh, at about this time it was, it was all intentional to try to soften up the Taliban to pull the plug now I think would bring a I think the president will get clobbered uh, from a lot of people to his right and the U.S. military would be really, really angry at him if he pulled the plug at this point. Michael, are we seeing an uptick in the casualties because the U.S. is, is on the offensive against the Taliban and there's more engagements? Or is it also, or is it and as well, because the Taliban tactics ha are evolving, they're becoming more efficient, more deadly, using IEDs, using suicide attacks? Well, unfortunately, it's both, Anderson. I mean, You've seen the Taliban here. It is an evolving enemy. It is, it is a constantly changing insurgency in tactics, in style, in number. I mean, that's classic guerrilla warfare. As, as the, the conventional forces like the US or the British troops do something, the Taliban sits back, watches, and then formulates its response. We saw that happen with this massive offensive that's become President Obama's war in Helmand province here in southern Afghanistan. There, we're seeing a great focus of American troops, more soldiers dying than we've seen before, a lot of it happening there, focusing on one small area of a very big picture. So it's a matter of both things, unfortunately, an evolving enemy and more engagement from American troops and David, President Obama's war. David, uh, David, David the, these, these stories now of widespread vote rigging uh, in favor of President Karzai in the recent election, that certainly does not help President Obama in, in terms of trying to sell this as a, as a war of necessity. That's absolutely right, Anderson. It's really added to the burden of the U.S. military because basic to the strategy of counterinsurgency that General Petraeus has brought to this, just as he brought to Iraq, was that you need to get more security for the people of the country and have a central government that is trusted. These fraud, the amount of fraud in these elections could easily delegitimize the Karzai government, and Michael knows this better than I do, in the eyes of millions of the Afghani people, uh, and that makes it much more complicated for the U.S. Anderson, I might add, on terms of what the president may decide to do, there is a good deal of speculation right now fueled by a report in the Los Angeles Times 
that what's being considered is the idea of increasing the number of combat troops, U.S. combat troops, by 14 or 15,000, but then to reduce the number of American supply troops, uh, the non-combat troops, uh, and to replace them with private contractors. Uh, we already have more contractors there than we have soldiers. That would be a major shift in the way we do things. Uh, already, as you said, uh, more contractors serving there than in any previous war in U.S. history. Uh, we've got to leave it there. David Gergen, thanks. Michael Weir, stay safe. We'll see you next week. Also out of Afghanistan, a shocking report of booze, brawls, and prostitutes at a compound for private U.S. embassy guards, these contractors that David are talking about. The evidence is undeniable. Photos of drunk and naked contractors partying in what one watchdog group called a Lord of the Flies environment, declaring, quote, zero tolerance for the behavior. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton today ordered a wide-ranging investigation into Armor Group, which is the private company responsible for U.S. embassy security. Tom Foreman takes us up close. In a summer of growing attacks near the Kabul embassy and growing fatalities among American troops, these pictures. Private embassy security guards holding what appear to be wild, half-naked drinking parties while away from the embassy and off-duty. Hugely inflammatory in a Muslim country. The independent watchdog group, Project on Government Oversight, or POGO for short, says the photos came from guards who say supervisors pressured others to join in. And then if they don't engage, they sort of hold it against them, which is ripping apart the fabric of the whole chain of command. The guards surrounding the embassy are employed by Armor Group, owned by Wackenhut Services, under a $190 million State Department contract, which has been under fire. Is that at times, the security of the U.S. Embassy in Kabul may have been placed in risk, at risk. At a hearing in June, Senator Claire McCaskill brought up a laundry list of concerns, and that watchdog group, POGO, is now adding more. Foreign guards who speak so little English they cannot understand their bosses. Acute understaffing causing massive turnover and missing guards. One inspection this spring found 18 absent from their post. The State Department said in June it was working on the problem and... At no time was the security of American personnel at the U.S. Embassy compromised. But Pogo says these pictures were taken just last month. So a State Department delegation will soon head over to investigate. To be clear, there, there were some things going on in Kabul, uh, which uh, we were not aware of, but frankly, we, we should have been aware of them. At this point, however, that may not be enough. Senator McCaskill clearly wants full disclosure, wants to know why the State Department defended Wackenhut in front of her committee despite all these problems. CNN has reached out to Wackenhut officials asking them to explain these photos. So far, they have not. Anderson?